what's going on guys welcome back today we're doing a bit of challenge with Splunk so the room name is investigating with Splunk and we're given a scenario we're required to answer the questions in an attempt to analyze what happened and what uh, was the uh, reason or the key artifacts of the breach so if you read the description it says SOC analyst Johnny has observed some anomalous behaviors in the logs of a few Windows machines so that's where the incident happened in win a Windows workstation it looks like the adversary has access to some of these machines and successfully created some backdoor his manager has asked him to pull those logs from suspected hosts and ingest them into Splunk for quick investigation so there you go a Windows machine or a couple of Windows machines have been compromised uh, the Windows event logs have been pulled and uploaded to Splunk for quick investigation. We are required to find out what happened. Our task as a SOC analyst is to examine the logs and identify the anomalies. Okay. Alright, so deploying the machine, here we have Splunk. Now, the data has been uploaded and it's available to access the data as we mentioned in the previous video, when, when you upload data, you create an index. The index for the data is index equal main. And by retrieving the index, we will retrieve all the events. Make sure to click on all time. And we have a total of 12,256 events. That's the answer for the first question. Okay. On one of the infected hosts, the adversary was successful in creating a backdoor user. What is the username? Okay, so basically we're looking to find out how the username has been created. We have two methods. We can either search for the command or we can search for the event ID. So here on the left, we have event IDs over 55. And if we look at the command, we don't have a filter or field for command line. So we're going to filter by event ID. And specifically, we're going to filter for event ID that refers to a user creation. So that happens to be 4720. 4720. And that would give us only one event, which actually indicates the or that user account was created. So finding out the account name, we scroll down and we see it's A1 Berto. It's Alberto, but the one or the uh, one here replaces the L. So that's the account name or the username that has been created. On the same host, a registry key was also updated regarding the new backdoor user. What's the full path of that registry key? So here we're looking to find out all the events where a registry key has been added, modified, or deleted. So if we take a look at the left, we can see the category and we can see the top 10 values of the, ev of the uh, events categories. We can see this registry object added or deleted exactly describes the uh, question. So a registry key added, deleted, we click on that and we have 1,496 events. All right. So to filter these down more, we're looking to find out the these events that are related to the new backdoor user, which happens to be A1 Berto. And now we narrow down the, the number to two. So we have two events. And from here, we can find out the registry key that has been deleted. As you can see, delete key. And this is the key. How about the other event? If we take a look down there, we see he create key. But we're not looking to uh, keys that were created. We're looking that for the keys that were modified or updated or deleted, which happens to be this key. So user account has been created and a registry key was modified as such. Examine the logs and identify the user that the adversary was trying to impersonate. 
So basically, adversary has created a backdoor user. It's A1 Berto. So by choosing this name, they were trying to impersonate a specifically or a currently existing username. So we have to take a look again at the current users in the host and see which one is similar to A1 Berto. So we have Alberto, that's the real one, Alberto. That's the real username, okay? The backdoor one, the fake version was A1 Berto. The real one is Alberto. That is the name that attacker was trying to impersonate so that they go undetected in the attack. So up until now, the attacker got access. They created one username or a backdoor username called A1 Berto that looks similar to Alberto. Next. What's the command used to add a backdoor user from a remote computer? So from here, we are trying to find out how the username a Umberto has been created. Okay, there must be a command that has been executed from a remote computer. Why? Because the Windows machines have been compromised, of course, from the attacker computer, which is a remote computer. The attacker executed a, uh, a command on their machine, the remote computer, to add the backdoor user. We want to find out this command, how we ended up with this command here. Okay, so if we go back, index main, and here we search for net user. So that's the only command that's actually used to add a username. So net username, scrolling down, Taking a look at the fields here. So we're looking to find out the exact command, but we ended up with one 6,000 events, four users. If we narrow these down to Alberto, we have three, in the command line we have three commands, but these are not the commands we're looking for. So we're going to go back Let's see here. So basically the attacker executed the command from a remote computer. So not exactly the username. So we're looking for here um, net user. We have 6,000 events. We have to narrow these down somehow. If we search for WMIC, 89, 89 events. Still, we are far from the answer. We're looking here to find out the exact command, but we're getting too many events for the net user add. Okay, going back. So the attacker, first they got access as one of these users. This user is the original user. How about James? Command line, four command lines. So why I selected James here? Basically, James could be the username that the attacker got access to when they first compromised the machine. So if I look at the command lines, command line field, I see four interesting commands. And I can see this one, C Windows System 32, WMIC indicating, WMIC indicates that the attacker got access through PowerShell, specifically evil WinRM. And they executed this command to add the user A1 Berto. So A1 Berto is a backdoor username that has been created with this command, starting from the first access or the first foothold account, which was James. So that's the command. How many times was the login attempt from the backdoor user observed during the investigation? How many times was the login attempt from the backdoor user observed during the investigation? How many times they logged in with the backdoor username? The backdoor username is A1 Berto. We want to find out in the category here what are the events? We're looking to find if there is a log on. So there is no log on, it means there is no log in or successful log in with this uh, username. Taking a look at the event IDs, 
we have eight event IDs and none of these event IDs match to a successful or failed login attempt, which means we are left with zero. What's the name of the infected host on which suspicious partial commands were executed? So here we, we are trying to also to find out the host name of the infected machine. We already found that the username was James. So if we go back and type partial, just type partial. As you can see here, it gives you all of the partial commands that have been executed. And the host happens to be James Brown. Partial logging is enabled on this device. How many events were logged for the malicious partial execution? Partial logging is a feature that lets you log all of the partial commands executed on a specific host. The catch is once you enable partial logging, an event ID is triggered in Windows. The event ID is 4103. So we want to find out how many events were generated as a result of partial logging. We have to filter for this event ID. So event Exactly, we have 79 events. An encoded partial script from the infected host initiated a web request. What's the full URL? Okay, back to partial. So here we want to decode the command that has been executed. There is exactly one, only one command, which is this one. So we're looking to decode this command. Scrolling all the way down. So let's copy all of that. And we will go to Cyberchef. From page 64. I'm going to delete all of these. And down there. Okay, so we have decoded the base 64, but as you can see, we need some encoding, some modifications on the output. So we're going to use decode, decode text. So this is text. We're going to need to decode this to a uh, formula that we can understand. So UTF-8, exactly not good. UTF-6, 7, 16. This one sounds good. Okay. So now, if we scroll down, we see here the user agent, and beside the user agent, we see a base64 string. Right after the string, we have directory or path indicating that a, new, a page named news.php or a file named news uh, has been accessed. So that's the path of the URL. What about the URL itself? I'm going to duplicate this, copy the base64. Probably this base 64, if we decode it, we will have the URL, full URL. As you can see, it is the IP address. Now, if we take that, slash new, so PHP, we have the full URL. But we need to write the full URL in a specific formula. Uh, as you can see, defang the URL. So we go to, um, let's see. Remove these, and this is the final answer. That was an intermediate challenge with Splunk. It didn't involve so many filters, so many uh, processing search queries in Splunk. It was just simple analysis of an uh, incident. It required us to understand the event IDs and how to jump between different stages during a compromise. Okay guys, I hope you like that and I will definitely see you in the next video.